Hello, good evening and welcome to another West UK Weekly. Good evening folks if you're watching this evening. Um, hopefully Susan will be along shortly to join us. Um, maybe we might even see Pete Brasso appear tonight at some point. Uh, there's a couple of people watching right now so if you're watching say hi. Post a hi in the comments, you don't have to tell us who you are if you don't want to. Um, joining me this evening folks, I have Richard Sumner. Hello. Of Spreadsheet Solutions. Um, call me crazy, but this guy likes spreadsheets and, and Excel. Um, just a little bit. <laughs> just a, not my thing, but he goes nuts for it. Um, so what are we talking about tonight? Well, we're talking about what does it cost to own a website, should we say, or run mm -hmm. one? Um, and how do you measure if your ownership or investment in that website is actually working? How, is it, how, how do you measure if it's doing what it's supposed to do? Um, so what we'd like to get started with really is um, what is this show all about? So for anyone who's just joining us for the first time this evening, apologies if my brain's a bit everywhere. It's been a long day today. Um, so this is a business, an IT and a website show for anyone who's thinking of starting a business or anyone who's already running one who might be a little bit off the beaten track and not, not really too sure of how to do anything. Um, you know, thinking back to when I started West UK, 20 years ago, there wasn't the sort of help available that there is now. Mm. Uh, there wasn't a network of businesses you could depend on. Um, the only person I could really call on was my cousin. She ran her own business and still does. And after badgering her for a couple of weeks and probably upsetting her along the way with too many questions. Um, so this is our chance to give something back and help people have a bit of a repository, if you like, of information that they might find useful. Um, and along the way, if we can support a good charity along the way as well, what we'd really like to do, uh, you notice I'm buying time here now where people try and get their backsides onto YouTube. Um, so we've got the live chat here on your screen and you should be able to see that there. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping to do as well is show a bit of support and love for the Diagrama Foundation. Um, so if by the end of the year we can get our viewer count up to, to, uh, up to about a thousand subscribers, uh, then we can start taking live chats and, and get people hand, getting their hands in their wallets hopefully. Um, so that would be awesome. So moving back to what the hell are we doing? There we go. Um, so tonight's show we're talking about what a website costs and how do you measure its uh, or how do you measure your return on your investment. Um, so one of the things I think we should kick off with is by making it very clear that a website should a be part of your marketing, not your only marketing, and that b it's an investment, not an expense. Would you say that's about right, Rich? Yeah, I think that's right. I think it's, it's as you say, it's part of the whole process. It's not just a standalone thing. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Um, they kind of say, oh, the number of times I've seen people in group chats and things on Facebook and whatnot, where people have come on saying, I need a website. And you, they just get viciously attacked by hundreds of web developers throwing prices at them and what they can do. And I just think, well, no one's really asking the questions of what do you need it for? What are you trying to achieve with the website? Because it should form part of the whole business plan, mm. not just, it's not just a, oh, I need, you know, it's not just a checklist where you can tick off all the things that you actually need for business and a website's one of them. Mm. It should all be flowing. It should all be part of an overall plan. There's and nothing there. I don't know. It looks like we're frozen. It's gone a bit weird. Are we still live? It says an excellent connection up there. If we wave, I know there's about a 20 second delay on it tonight for some reason, but everything there seems to have gone a bit frozen. Um, let's see what's happened. See if we're still live. Bear with us a second. Mm -hmm. It shows there's three people watching. Oh, the third person could be me. <laughs> that shows as still live. How odd. Yeah, it looks like it's frozen. I just want to check the audio is actually still coming through. But the picture seems to have frozen. I just want to check the audio is actually still coming through. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's oh, moving around. There we go. Back again. God bless software. Eh? Mm. Right. Okay. So hopefully you can hear us and see us moving around again. Maybe every, every now and then if we move, people might not 
think it's all frozen and crashed up. Yeah. Because if we sit still too long, people will think it's all frozen. <laughs> you just spin yeah. around as a well, <coughs> Yeah, we just spin around in circles <laughs> and make everyone dizzy. Um, three people watching. Is that three? Is that me, my phone, and my iPad? Or let's yeah, no, turn sure. that off so that we don't we don't need to see that. Um, yeah. So what you're saying about <coughs> our website is an investment, um, and it, it should be seen as something that is an ongoing cost, right? Well, it is an ongoing cost, and I think a lot of people make the mistake of. I didn't pay anything for it or I paid minimal for it and that's my investment. But at the end of the day, you're either paying someone to do it for you, mm. whether you're paying an experienced web developer who's for a, for a top-end website or you're paying a virtual assistant to put in some information into a, a WordPress template. It mm. doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you're paying something. Mm. And if you're not paying, if you're doing it yourself, you're paying in time. Mm. So there's always an investment to, to be done. And I don't think... I think the website's ongoing. I mean, if, if I think about when I first started my business and did the first website. Cool, blimey. The, Thinking back to your first website. That's... It, was, it was horrendous. <laughs> but the first website, for me to go from nothing mm. to I now have a website, was a fraction of the time I've spent overall. Because mm. I've spent a lot more time developing it since then, changing mm. it, adapting it with the business and, and making it better and improving on it than mm. I ever did initially making it. Yeah. So your initial investment, whether it be time or money, is not mm. the end of the deal. There's a lot more coming on after that. Yeah. If you look back at your first website now, would you cringe? I look back at it and I do <laughs> cringe. <laughs> you see it regularly, huh? Well, no. I, uh, I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night screaming. But <laughs> it, wake you, up with a sweat. Oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. But I, I, I think that's true of a lot of aspects of business. I look at some mm. of my early marketing and... Mm. and early social media posts and early all that and i just think oh when we were all clueless and didn't you, know what we you were doing. idiot but <laughs> these things you you learn these things they come with mm. experience so it takes time yeah and when i think back to the very first ever iteration of the west website it was you know remember blockbusters you're old enough to remember that mm. the old game show with the yellow um, hexagons our website was based on that because at the time we were all working for a rather large corporate parking company in this country um, so our color scheme was yellow and gray and we all were quite big fans of blockbusters so that's how we came <laughs> up with the color scheme and the logo came about from those two things uh, because we started the company while we were working for that company and one of the one of the, our, our favorite things we used to like to rave about during our lunch break was blockbusters so it just sort of materialized that way and I'll, I'll look at it now on the Wayback machine it's like oh i can't believe we did that well, my, my, my first logo was from some website find me a logo.com or something stupid <laughs> where you just take a logo and actually i was walking around in, in london one day and saw a business card on the floor mm. and it caught my eye because the logo on the business card was my business logo but it was another business and i thought well, at that point i thought no i really need to do yeah. something about stay that. away from those template websites right <laughs> and uh that's when i designed my own logo but until yeah. i mean you you learn these things yeah um but yeah you know essentially the first thing anyone with a website, I think, needs to understand is that, like you say, it's going to cost you money and it's going to continue to cost you money. There's no such thing as free and you shouldn't look at it as an expense or a cost. It's it's an investment because the only people who have, the only people that would view it as a, a cost or an expense are people who are doing it for fun and not for profit. Um, you know, if it's a hobby website like the local cycling club or something, that's, yeah. a, that's going to be an expense or a cost because there's no profit in that. Um, but if you're in business, you know, your website is a, is a, is basically a lifetime rental, really, isn't it? Probably a better way of describing it for the average person. Um, Stephen Rigel's joined us. Good evening. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Stephen. Great to have you on. And yeah, shame on you for being late. You should have been here, what, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Never mind. Try better next week. Um, so, yeah, a, a website is an ongoing expense that you should be prepared to make part of your annual expenditure if you like um, and like you say the, the excellent point that Richard raises is uh, this is not going to get confused at all having two Richards on by the way no, uh, so if you've got a question for Richard or Richard just ask uh, one of us will answer it eventually um, so what the hell was I saying you're waffling on you I know right <laughs> One of us will get to it. You were talking off. about some key point that I made, but then you forgot what it was. The time. That's the time investment. Yeah, yes. there you go. Um, so whether it's money that you're in, investing, like Richard said, if you're paying maybe a VA to update your content and do that sort of stuff for you, or 
a web developer to put it all together and do the whole thing. Um, if you're doing it yourself, as quite a lot of people do nowadays, you know, things have come a long way, you can do it yourself. Um, mm. There's going to be a lot more investment in terms of your time. And one of the things I think a lot of people forget to consider is, let's say, for example, if you're a professional hairstylist, mm -hmm. what do they charge an hour these days? 500 quid? <laughs> if my wife's haircut is anything to go by? Yeah, mine, uh, mine are slightly cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> what they're charging nowadays is crazy. Um, she'll come out of the hairdressers after an hour and say, sort of 50 quid lighter. Um, and if you take that, that hairstylist, they might spend... Not, they might not have much knowledge in putting their website together, but they might spend three or four hours trying to do something that takes, for most of us, half an hour. So they might spend 200 quid of their own time doing something actually they could have gone, here's 25 quid or 50 quid, can you get that done? Um, so actually they've lost money in mm. terms of their, inv in their investment. They, they, they could have spent four hours working and earned 200 pounds. Well, well this, is, this, is what it, this is what it comes down to. I think it comes down to whether you time rich cash poor or, or the other way around because if you've got when if you're starting a website uh, if you're starting a business mm. and you've got loads of time and you don't need the immediate income or whatever the case might be and you you want to take your time and do this and you've got time mm. then by all means try and do your own website because i look at i mean i'm, I'm not a web developer but if i look at uh, spreadsheets which i do make people will send me their spreadsheet that they've spent the last four months trying to make mm. I'll do it in a week and do it better than what they did in four months. Yeah. And then I go, well, how did you manage that? And I go, because I do this all day, every day. I yeah. can do things a lot quicker than how they can do yeah. them. And that's, and so actually when people say to me, what do you charge an hour? I say, well, it doesn't really matter. Look at what I'm charging you to do the project and how long would it take you? Mm. If it's going to take you six months and my, and what I'm charging you compared to your six months is, is value for money. Mm. It's better to get me to do it than for you to do it. And exactly. it's the same with websites. Exactly. How, how good are you at doing it? Because yeah. if you can do what you need and you can do it quickly and efficiently, then fine. Yeah. But if you can't, get someone else to do it. Exactly. And and like Richard said, <laughs> if the person who's who's gonna can do the job for you can save you from losing out on earning more money doing what you do well, then it's got to be better value. So even if the person charges half of what you would make in the same amount of time, but they're charging twice as much as your next door neighbor's kid it's still good value because mm. you're not losing all of that um, earning potential. But also, I think it's important to understand what you want from your website right from the beginning. Mm. Because, I mean, as I was saying earlier, you belong to, belong to these Facebook groups and things, and there are two questions. Does anybody know someone who's a virtual assistant? Don't or? get me started on Facebook groups. <laughs> We're going to start an yeah, argument you've, here. you've been thrown out of most of them. <laughs> We're going to start a war. I behave myself, generally, <laughs> I so <don't. laughs> they let me stay. But... Do you, do you know a VA is the first one that just goes nuts? And yeah. the other one is, do you know a web developer? Both of those two, it's like, it's like putting meat in water, <laughs> shark infested water. It's the world wide they just, West, they, just, they just go crazy. <laughs> and yeah. what winds me up right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upset a lot of web developers here, but here goes. No, no, me too. <laughs> what winds me up is people say, does anyone know a web developer? And people start throwing costs in and yeah, I'll do it for 50 quid and I'll do it. For, and you just kind of go, how can you be throwing in a price? You have no idea what they want. Yeah. You don't know whether it's an e-commerce site, whether it's an information site, how many pages, what they want to do, how they want to do it. And you throw in prices in the ring. Mm -hmm. Ask the question and any web developer worth their salt is going to sit down with you beforehand and say, what do you want to achieve on this website? Mm. And if they don't ask you that question, alarm bells. Don't touch them. Yeah, I mean, he's just said exactly what goes through my mind every single day when I see this stuff on Facebook. It's, it's painful to watch because it, it you feel sorry for the person who they're just trying to find some help. And you see, like he said, 88 replies on the last one I saw. And it was literally about 75 of those replies were, oh, yeah, I charge 250 quid to build a website. I charge 100. I'll do it for 50. And you think, where are these morons coming from? Um, and I don't mind using the term morons because I'll challenge any of them to prove me otherwise. Um, and then you'll, and then there's about two or three people that you start to recognize as the months go by. And those two or three people are the select few who will say, okay, well, maybe we should have a chat and find out what you want, uh, and find out if, you know, if what you want is actually going to meet your own requirements. And it's always the same two or three people. You can start to spot the ones who actually, they probably know what they're doing. Mm. Um, and it's funny as well, the amount of people who say, hey, you know what, I'm available to start right now. 
So well, why are you available to start right now? Have you not got any work to do? Um, you know, it's like if you find a good builder. If they can start today, um, you should probably be asking why are they so freely available? Why haven't they got any customers? Unless they're so efficient that they're finished already. Well, there is that, yeah. They're yeah. so good at their job, they've finished everything really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, it does come down to finding out what your website or where your website fits into your marketing and what it's, as Richard said earlier, what its purpose is. Well, because, I mean, if you, if you look at this way, I, I meet people, and I mean, I don't even make websites. I don't know why they're talking to me about it, but they do. They obviously think, oh, spreadsheets, you must be good at websites. Well, because you know how to use a computer. Well, yeah. I mean, I get phoned occasionally <laughs> and asked if I know how to set up Windows. I'm like, no, <laughs> phone someone else. But oh, yeah. when it comes to websites, I think what you, what you end up with is some people will want a website because you need to have a website. When you meet someone at a networking event, mm. they take your card, they go home, they put in your website, they, ch they check you out. Now, if, you, mm. if you're getting all of your leads from LinkedIn or whatever the case might be, or you're getting referrals and you don't actually need more, and you're not using your website necessarily as a lead generation tool, but you want to have a website, people can come and read up about you, then that kind of website, you can get put together for a minimal price. Mm. If you now want to go and have an e-commerce website where you're selling all different kinds of products and you want to have stock uploading and monitoring and all the rest of it, that then becomes a massive deal. Now, anyone who's charging 50 quid is not going to make you an e-commerce website. No. And if they are, there's something wrong. Or it's so, been outsourced to some, offshore somewhere. Exactly. Now, if you look at no, it, no. If, if you're a business owner and you need a website just for a little bit of information about you, mm. but you're not, the people aren't necessarily going to be buying from it, it's not, it's not pivotal to your business, yeah. you can get a 50 quid website or get a VA to spend a few hours populating yeah. stuff and do it. it. It'll work fine. I've, I've done a few of those where it just takes a few <laughs> hours to put a website together. Exactly. Uh, but if your website, if it's basically a case like Amazon, if you don't have a website, you don't have a business, mm. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to start investing proper money into it because yeah. you need someone professional who knows what they're doing to do it. Yeah. I mean, it it works like that for, for just about anything, really, if, if you want. To. And you hear the you hear the whole phrase, you you get what you pay for. And I... I, I oh, you I, will in this industry. Well, I'm not sure because I think sometimes if you pay a little, you're going to get a little. Yeah. But if you pay a lot, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get a lot. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I you've got to watch out for. I sit corrected, yeah. And that's why you ask the question at the beginning. If a web developer starts asking you questions, and sometimes when, I know when I'm making spreadsheets for people, I'll ask them questions and they'll look at me as if, like, why are you asking that? Yeah. I say, but there's a reason, there's a method in my madness, because if it's that, I'm going to do it this way. If it's yeah. this, I'm going to do it that way. And those questions, I think, help me to clarify what the client wants and the best way to do it for them. Mm. And it's the same with websites. People, if they, anyone is worth their soul, it's going to come back with a lot of questions. And mm. you can't get fed up because they're asking you questions. No. They're asking you questions to understand what you want so they can, they can deliver what, what you're expecting. Yeah, I've had that. I've had that where I've, heard, I've asked people. Um, people have come to me with websites before that are a complete mess. And they've said, well, can you just sort this out? And, I've said, and then you start asking them questions. And sort of 10 questions in, they sort of say, well, are you going to sort it out or not? He said, well, hang on a minute. In order to sort it out, I need to find out where does it need to go? You know, what the hell's the purpose of this? What do you want? What do you classify as sort it out? What's the end result? Um, and if you can help me figure out what's going on in your head as to what the end result should be, then I know which way I'm going to get there. Uh, it's no different from your sat nav, you know. Do you want to pay a toll or not? Which way are you mm -hmm. going to go? Because as, as Stephen's mentioned, I'm just reading the comments, and you mm. said that doing your own way is very time-consuming, and that's, that, that is exactly it. Painful as doing, well. Doing anything yourself that you aren't, I wouldn't say qualified, that's not the right word, but you aren't skilled to do, yeah. is always going to be more time-consuming. But there's, there's, there's a balance to be had. Mm. If you do it yourself, you're learning something, you're learning a new skill, you're learning the way to do it, it does get easier. Mm. It's another skill that you now have. Yeah. As well as if you do it yourself, you can actually do it the way you want it. Mm. And you can chop and change and you've got that ability. Yeah. I've seen so many people who will outsource their website to get someone to make it. And then they want to make simple changes, but they don't know how. And mm. now you've got to go back to the no one showed them back all. again. Whereas when you do it yourself, you <coughs> learn, you can change it yourself. You can be more flexible. Mm. So there are pros and cons, yeah. but you've got to realize it's going to take you a lot longer in time than it's going to take a professional to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, uh, like Richard says, if it's a skill that you want to develop and learn anyway, then you've probably got nothing to lose by doing it yourself. 
Because if, if, yeah. that's, if that's a skill set you're trying to learn, then hey, go for it. Knock yourself out because you can classify that as learning time as well or personal development. But if you're a mechanic or a hairdresser or some, some other professional trade where you just don't have the time, or like Gareth, who was on the show, by the time that poor sod gets home, he's probably knackered. Uh, the last thing he wants to do is fart around with websites and, and, and figure out what an HTML is. But, well, that, I mean, look, when I, when I started my business, my wife was working full time. Um, I had the time to, to develop the business, to put that initial in, uh, investment of time in. Mm. And doing a website, I wanted to be able to maintain the website, do it myself going forward. And that's why I put the effort in the time to learn it. Mm. Um, but if you, if you, if you, um, if you already got your job going or you need to hit the ground running or you've already got clients and you need to, and you need to be concentrating on that, yeah. you, a web, doing a website is very time consuming and therefore it's probably best just to get, just to outsource it. Indeed. If, yeah, if you've got a busy order book or a hell of a lot of work on, then you can probably afford to spend a little bit more on having someone take care of it for you as well. But also the other thing you've got to take into consideration is even if you've got time, mm. if you are working all day developing your website, mm. Is you, that's a lot of investment and are you going to get that return on your investment? Well, the other side to that as well is you're not working on your business. Yeah, I mean, what could you be using that time to be engaging on LinkedIn, updating your profile, yeah. putting out marketing, creating content, mm. creating videos to help sell your business, all those kind of things, because those are other things you could be doing. Mm. And one could argue that actually that, your time spent on that might be more valuable Indeed. than on a website because... A website, if you give someone the right instructions, mm. they could do it quicker than you. Whereas that other marketing stuff, sometimes you want to do that yourself. Yeah. So actually, what is the best way to be using your time? Mm. And is doing your website the best way? Now, if your website's pivotal to your business, then fine. Mm. Well, if you're Amazon, but, your website is your business. Yeah, but if you're one of these guys who go, well, I really should have a website and it doesn't really matter what it is. Why are you spending six why months do you need fiddling a around with it? Yeah. Get someone else's to do it. Or even why do you have a website in some cases? Well, sometimes people have a website because it gives you a certain amount of credibility, doesn't it? Yeah. If, you, if you come back from network, if I come back from a networking event and the person doesn't have a website and I can't find them on social media, I start to think, you who start is to this wonder if, if they, did you actually see them today or was it just a figure yeah. of your imagination? Or are they part, you know, is it like a part-time hobby or what's going on? So, yeah. Indeed. Um, but to cut to the meat as well, because I know some people are probably curious about the title of today's show, what does a website actually cost? Um, I'll give you an example of what I charge for a website. So I did a website recently for Bromley Business Network. Uh, one page website took me literally three and a three and something hours to put it together, finished, and then about another two hours of after tweaks. So mm. you put it together, finished, give it to the customer and say, right, here's your first draft. What are you thinking? And they come back to you with, can you change this? Can you change that? Can you take that photo off? So a couple of hours off. I did the couple of hours for nothing um, because it's a networking group that I go to. Um, so, and I just charged them for four hours labor because it was just the, the simplest way to bill for it. And it came to a hundred quid plus VAT. Um, so, you know, 25 quid, at what I would say is about the same rate as a VA. So that's mm -hmm. about right. Yeah. So it was more of an administration cost than a web development cost. Um, you know, set the website, put the content in, change a few colors for free. Yeah. Just under four hours job done. And the tweaks were done for nothing afterwards as a sort of thank you very much for all the nice breakfasts. Um, so, you know, for a cost of a sort of around about the VA sort of cost, uh, you can get a fairly, I'd say average, a fairly average kind of website. You know, it, this website wouldn't have won any awards, um, but it's super quick. It's fast. It performs and it does exactly what it's supposed to do, uh, which is what, you know, that's one of my specialities is that it performs it's quick and it's efficient um, but I won't win any awards from the design industry <laughs> um, so a typical basic website can if done correctly and I can get away with charging a hundred pound plus fat because the last 20 years I've spent doing it I can almost pretty much do it my eyes shut uh, so that's what I'm charging the 25 pound an hour for uh, because it's it's a no-brainer um, but I've had jobs where they're, they're, you look at them and you almost don't want to take the job on when you look at it. You sort of look mm. and go, oh, no, I don't want to get involved with that. But your inner self says, no, actually, I want to help these people because they're in a bit of a mess. Um, and those jobs have been sort of 
uh, you, you price them in blocks. You say, okay, well, this is the first thing we need to do. Based on how that goes, depends on what happens next, because it's such a mess. It's like when you get an electrician around your house. They, you say, can you put a plug in that socket over there? And you knock a hole in the wall and find that the wall behind it's rotten. Ah, okay, well, it was going to cost that. Now it's going to cost this. Um, so, and, but if your, build, if your project is something custom, um, where you know, an off-the-shelf bit of software isn't going to cut it, then you could find yourself in need of a developer. So if you're going to need, need to hire a website developer, you're going to be looking at at least a minimum of 60 to 70 pound an hour minimum. The average going rate for a good developer is about 80 pound an hour. Mm. Um, and they're going to want to spend a decent, uh, decent amount of time with you to start with, working out exactly what you need and drawing up a plan of how you're going to get there. Um, so you, will, you should expect questions and plans and, and sort of strategic payments along the way. Yeah. Um, and like I was saying with Robin um, last week about costs and stuff, um, you know, you draw up a plan and, you, and getting paid for the web developer is no different for the customer paying for that service. Draw up a plan with your web developer and say, well, let's make this in X amount of incremental payments so that the, the developer is covered and you're covered. Because some developers, like you know, I've seen somewhere, they've said, oh, we want 100% up front. You know, like, what? Are you mad? No way. Um, or they want 50%, you know, well, that's a bit too much. Especially if it's like a couple of grand's worth of work. It's a lot of money to lose. So if you're investing all this time and money, or both, or one or the other, in your website, um, how the hell do you know if that's working? Because that's really one <laughs> of the things we want to cover today is now, now we've sort of revealed what a website should cost in terms of time, money, and actual cold hard cash um how do you know if that money hasn't just gone straight down the drain rich see this is this is where where i normally come into it and uh, although i don't make websites as you've probably guessed by the name of spreadsheet solutions i do make spreadsheets and data analysis is one of the prime requests i get all the time and if you look at your website as part of your business and part of your marketing process mm. you've got to ask yourself a lot of questions why is the traffic coming to your website? Where are they coming from? When they get to your website, are they staying around or are they disappearing? Okay. When they're staying around, which pages are they visiting? Mm -hmm. What are they looking at? What are they downloading? And what are they purchasing slash using contact forms? Mm -hmm. Now, contact forms and purchasing on your website is simple to monitor because you're either going to get an email saying they've contacted you or this is going to be some kind of yeah, trail yeah. as far as what they've Someone purchased. Someone fills in a form and yeah, email Or they you. buy something and it notifies you if you've got an e-commerce website or something like that. So yeah. your, what they're buying is, is fairly easy to know. Mm. What they're looking at and what they're downloading, the data's there, the information's not always there. Because mm. a lot of people have Google, they'll have, do you have Google Analytics? They say, yes, I have Google Analytics. I say, do you check your Google Analytics? No. no. <laughs> Why don't you check your Google Analytics? No, because I open Google Analytics and there's 75 million graphs and I don't know what I'm looking for. Default answer every time and they look at exactly. it and go, I don't know what it means, so close it. <laughs> so what, what I've done is I've made a few spreadsheets I've got in the store in the in the basic range on my website. And us sure. Yeah, like there's... Here, basic range. So for you cheapskates that are watching have got no, ain't got two pennies to rub together. Now, these spreadsheets are all either free, 25 quid or 35 quid, and there's a whole range of them there. Actually, that's pretty cheap, actually. Um, now, that's I've got a few. In fact, the, the very first one, don't open it up, but because the, uh, there's a few there. The very first one, website visited sections. So what I do on that... Oh, this one here. Yeah, what I do on that spreadsheet is actually take your Google Analytics data, mm. all the different pages, where they've come from, let you then assign those pages to categories. So what you may oh. have, for example, is this page is a service page, that page is an information page, that page is a product page, whatever. Categorize all your pages, and then it shows you your breakdown of how many pages you've got in each category, as well as where your visitors have visited. So if 10%... Don't say that too fast, right? Yeah, especially <laughs> after you've had a few. So, a few drinks. <laughs> so for argument's sake, if 10% of your... If 50% if of your website is information pages, mm. but 3% of your viewers are going there... It's There's something wrong. Time, You're either wasting your time doing it yeah. or your visitors are coming to the website for the wrong reason. Mm. But having information like that and the other ones, I've got a file down. Because these don't even look like spreadsheets. No, but that's they what I do. They certainly look a lot clearer than some of the stuff I've seen on Google Analytics. 
Well, yeah, and yeah. also with this is I'll sit down with, with for the bespoke ones, not necessarily these ones, but mm. I'll sit down with the client and say, what do you want to see? Mm. What are we actually wanting to monitor? Right. So you click on the different tabs and the reports there. There's none of this Google where you've got to go and filter this, select that, find so, this, do that, do so that. So if someone came to you and said, Richard, I want to see which bits of my website should I be investing my time in? Can you sit down with someone and say, okay, well, let's work out what, what is on your website, Yeah. how many people are looking at it, and actually... This is the bit that you're wasting your time on. But also, this is the stuff that the remember stuff. we said it's part of a process. So you mm. really start why are they coming to the website? Mm. Robin, if you're watching, he said the word process. Yeah, so. that's what you should be saying, <laughs> Robin, in your talks. But anyway, <laughs> we, we've got. We're upsetting some people today, mate. <laughs> we've. Why are people mm. coming to your website? Because yeah. here's the other thing. I've got other um, spreadsheets here. What was the other one I've got called? Marketing campaign report. And I'm actually making a new spreadsheet now, which is called the marketing. Oh, what? Slow down. Marketing campaign report. But I'm making a new one now called the Marketing Hub, which I'm actually going to give away for free. Ooh. And what this one does is you, we actually schedule your social media content and you can get a unique link for every single social media post. And then, is it the spreadsheet that makes that? Or? The spreadsheet will make the link for you. It'll make up wow. a different query string. So what you can do then is you can post that on social media. Mm. And then when you get your Google Analytics, it'll tell you where which of those different posts are bringing in all your different your the clicks to the website so now you six nations rugby yeah we go, hold, it's all happening there so now what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to look and see which of my campaigns are bringing in the most clicks mm. which pages are being the most viewed so actually if you look at that in detail and depending on what you're looking at mm. you'll be able to track not necessarily individuals but your your visitors mm. from why are they there what have they come to look at what are they actually looking at and why are they leaving yeah. and then you can sit down and go is that is that achieving what I initially set out the website to yeah. achieve? If the answer is no, stop wasting time. Change right? something. Yeah. If the answer is yes, crack on. Just go back to my homepage. Well, like, if you're wanna, spending, wanna, yeah, go if back you're, to the homepage. I want to show you something. If you're spending two hours a week writing blog posts. And no, 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 not page one, the actual homepage of the website. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no one's taught me how to use a website yet. Oh, this one here. There we go. There you go. Now, sure. one of the when I first started out in in the, I mean my website was totally different, but I went through a bit of a phase where I was changing you almost every up day. The background a lot as well. Yeah. That's now that that page, page you're seeing there, those are the four main services that we that we prov that we provide. Mm. And actually, I couldn't tell initially why clients were there because everything was just a mess. It was all it over was the place. A busy, busy it was very very it. busy. There was loads of stuff. I was just throwing information at people when they arrived, yeah. and I said, no 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 no, let's break it down. And putting those four buttons there was one of the best things I ever did because mm. now anyone who comes to the homepage will invariably click on one of those four or scroll down looking for something else. Mm. But the very first thing they click on is usually a very good indication to me as to why they're there. Yeah. Are they there for bespoke spreadsheets? Are they there for ready-made ones? If they are for ready-made, are they looking at the prime straight away or are they cost conscious and looking at the basic range? Yeah. Are they looking at the virtual assistants? Is that what they're after? Yeah. Because now I know based on the clicks, mm as to which service is more popular. What are people looking for? Well, you say that. I mean, if they're clicking on the virtual administrators, the, if they're clicking on the virtual yeah. assistant picture, then you need to put that picture on all four boxes. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is, when they go there, what are they then looking for inside there? Because yeah. sometimes people are looking for bespoke, but they click on the prime or the basic because they want to get inspiration and ideas as to what yeah, they yeah. actually need. So you've got to follow and see what they're doing. Like Instagram, but, isn't it, when people are trying to look for ideas? Well, yeah, but the other thing is... Show me if, everything you do if so you, I can get an idea of what I If you I just have a website and you just have Google Analytics and you never actually look at Google Analytics other than to look and say... You need to say that really slowly. Yeah. <laughs> it comes you up look really. at Google Analytics. I feel like I'm in Canada when I lived in Canada for six months. They're <laughs> like, why do you talk You have to talk so slowly, fast? yeah. But and it's late at night. A lot of people are probably drifting off, so... Yeah, well, we seem to be getting more people now. Happy know, days. Uh, say hi if you're online watching now. But at, at the end of the day... You need to know where you're, if you've got Google and Analytics and mm. you you look and you see, oh, I had 55 people today, oh, I only had 22 today. Is there What's a way, the point unless you know where they're going? Is there a way someone could be shown how to export something or some information from their Google Analytics and dump it into a spreadsheet that you've made so that it could actually, because I've seen yes. Google Analytics regularly and it's, it's not a nice thing to look at because it's, they've For, tried to simplify it and... They've done a, it's better now than it used to be. Google Analytics, unfortunately, busy. have, they've, they've 
because they say efficient. <laughs> Stephen says hi. Hey, you've been here thirty five minutes and now you're saying hi. But Be because they've <laughs> because they've offer so much data, it's yeah. difficult to try and filter it. But mm. what I what I do in the all the spread all the pre made spreadsheets I've got have demo videos, mm. and I will always at least if not show you in the demo video at least show you on the spreadsheet which links to follow to actually get the the data mm. that you cool. need. So it's not just a case of opening the spreadsheet and going right. Now you figure it out. No, no, no. There's always instructions with it as to how to get the data and, awesome. and, and, and what it's telling yeah. you and that kind of thing. See, Stephen was saying that he spends an awful lot of time on his website because he hasn't got much work on right now. Um, this could be the sort of thing that could benefit him, where if he actually didn't need to spend so much time, you know, like you were saying earlier, you could be spending an absolute bucket load of time on something that actually no one's looking at and not concentrating on the sections people are going to for your website that actually hasn't got any content or anything that they really want. Um, so identifying the bits you should be working on is kind of part and parcel of working out is your website meeting its purpose, right? Yes, and another thing we were talking about was the downloads. I learned a lot from the downloads. Mm. Now, if you're using WordPress and you're using the, some of the basic download manager, mm. you can actually export a list of all the downloads there's this data you can export and one of the spreadsheets i've made will accept that list of data and it will actually as they did before with the pages you can categorize your downloads and mm. it'll tell you which category is more popular and actually that i learned a lot from that because i had different brochures for different products and services mm. and you go on there and one of them was being downloaded loads and the other one not much and now you know okay people are actually more interested in that service mm. so if they're looking at the service why aren't they buying that service? Mm. Now you can go back and readdress address your brochure. And is yeah, this yeah. correct? Is it selling properly? All the rest mm. of it. But it gives you a good idea as to what the people are there mm. for. I remember when the rugby was on, I remember you calling saying, it's going crazy, what do I do? <laughs> and everyone was downloading your free rugby. Yeah, um, I, I made one for the Rugby World Cup and I think I had to quadruple the bandwidth <laughs> uh, because it just went, uh, Google discovered it. Every man it, and his dog wanted a copy of it. And I, I mean, I was having hundreds of hits every day just coming on mm. for that spreadsheet i don't imagine how many people were emailing it to their friends as well once they got it well that's probably been everywhere very very, very fun but that's but the whole point of me making it was so that when they're using that spreadsheet and they're going i wonder who can make us a spreadsheet well there's my name right yeah, in front exactly. of them and that's why i did exactly. it so i'm i'm happy with that but yeah it's a good marketing tool um it is like a, a loss leading they you know, give away something for free just to get your name out there um so how would you say um so with the types of websites, um, what's our notes say here? I need to go to spec savers and get my eyes fixed. Yeah. Uh, types of websites and what cost of investment. Yeah, we covered that. Um, yeah, that, was, that was all about well, I mean, what kind of, if you, if you want a flashy e-commerce or single yeah. dancing website, you're going to have to, you have to pay. If you want a simple one page, it's yeah. not going to cost you that much. Is, is a it? website meeting its purpose? So yeah, we, well, that's what we discussed with the analytics. Covered that. So ways to measure visitor behavior. Because um, well, that was all about the analytics, isn't it? Actually, yeah. getting to understand Google Analytics. Yeah. So you've got there are quite a few ways of doing this, and it depends how technically minded you are and how complicated you want it to be. There's quite a few tools out there. There's Google Analytics, which probably every man and his dog knows about, and probably fears as well. There is there is courses on Google's website called Google Garage, so you can go in there and learn about it. But then it becomes an even bigger. If you've got to go and take courses just to understand what the stats are saying, then you're probably going to be fearing it already. Mm. Uh, so there's people like me that take those courses and try and help decipher it for people like you. Um, there's things like SEM Rush that they've got a free free account that will show you some very good basic metrics, um, but they might not make much sense if you don't know what you're looking at. Uh, and this is the problem with a lot of metrics: is that if you don't know what you're looking at you don't understand what it means or how to use that information. Um, there's also, there's some quite good tools out there that are free, but you just have to play with them and try them out. But it does come back to, if you don't know what you're looking at, how the hell do you interpret it? And I think that's one of the things, the nice things about having a, a spreadsheet that explains it to you. It just cuts out all the fluff and just leaves you with what you actually need to actually no. There is another option. I mean, one of the services we provide under the virtual administrative assistance banner is I've created a fairly comprehensive spreadsheet, which I don't sell the spreadsheet. But what I do sell is uh, my wife's actually the, the VA who does that work. And mm. um, I've created a spreadsheet essentially for her to use. Mm -hmm. So people give her access, either give her access to the Google Analytics or just get an export of the Google Analytics CSV data sent to her. 
She'll put it in the spreadsheet. Say that back in slow motion yeah. so you get what you said. <laughs> so you can go into Google Analytics and say, please send this report, that report, email it monthly, yeah. and then forward that email on to my wife with, right. the, with the information. Yeah. She'll put it into the spreadsheet, create the report, save it as a PDF and send it to you. And that actually shows your breakdown per month. It doesn't, right. it doesn't go into too much detail yeah. because it's meant to simplify Google Analytics it's, rather than Yeah, it's meant to give a business owner stuff they can actually understand. Yeah, but obviously then that's a set report. Whereas yeah. if you want something bespoke, you'll need to, uh, we need to have a chat and discover. But mm. understanding your your analytics and understanding where, why your, web, your, your visitors are there, what they're doing, what they're not doing, if you don't know that, mm. then really you've just got this website there. I mean, you can monitor it by your clients. So, you know, if a client phones you up and says, yeah, I found your website and I want to talk to you. And you go, oh, yes, tick for the website. Okay. You can do that kind of thing. Yeah. But actually understanding your the client's, the, the visitor's behavior, mm. I think is fairly yeah, A lot essential. of people do do that. I mean, in, in ways of measuring your website's purpose, mm. a lot of people only actually, when you think about it now, having you just said that, a lot of people only, when you talk to them, they go, how did you find us? They will just list the website as one of the methods. Um, but quite often people don't actually dig down into, well, did they come straight to the contact page or what did they do first? Have they looked at the website 200 times first or was it their first visit? Um, and that, that's some of the stuff that actually, if you drill down into it and start examining, can actually prove to be very helpful. But also, I mean, I've had people contact me saying, I said to them, how did you find me? They said, we found you on LinkedIn. I said, well, fine, tick to LinkedIn. Mm. And then when I started dealing with them, I said, well, what are you looking at? And they said, well, actually, we're looking for a product like your prime range X, Y, and Z, but with this and that. Mm. I said, oh, so you've seen the prime range? He said, yeah, we went on your website, had a look around. <laughs> so although, Never the, mentioned that before, although, right? the, 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 although the tick comes to LinkedIn, because yeah. LinkedIn was one, your website still played a part. Yeah. So you're not going to know about those un unless you actually analyze the the uh, the data and the, that mm. Google can export. Yeah, and some, and some people have even, I've even heard this bantered around a few times, especially on some of the Facebook groups where some people have even said, well, do you even need a website? Or, or, or and some of them have been really bold and said, oh, I don't need a website. I just do everything on Facebook. Um, what would you say to someone who says that? <clears throat> well, there are two things, the two issues I've got. When you do everything, and I mean, I'm very involved in LinkedIn. I, I use it a lot, and it's one of my biggest no, marketing really? tools. Yeah. <laughs> Having said that, he's like on it all day long. You can't get what him if, off it. How does he get any work done? <laughs> what What if What if LinkedIn changed things tomorrow and didn't really work as well? I mean, th think mm. Think about Facebook. When When Facebook first started, and you had a business page, all your the people in your uh, liked your business page saw your content. Mm. Now. Less than ten percent sees it. Well, yeah, I was, was going to say I doubt if it's even that many. Now, what happens if they change it tomorrow? Going, no one sees it unless you pay. Yeah. And now you're doing everything, and now you've basically no. You... They're doing the, 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 the cheeky well, sites are already trying to do that because when we post stuff on our Facebook page now, you ever notice you get these alerts now that say your post could have reached all these people yeah. if you boost it, and it's like, well, hold on. So you're saying we now need to pay to make our posts so that the people that like our page actually see it. You're having a laugh in the eye. And you get these bloody alerts every day. And um, clicking that, I mean, on, this is a completely different topic, but clicking that boost post isn't necessarily the best way to be doing things anyway. But I think people do need a website because I think even even with market, marketing aside, I mean, where do my leads come from? Most of my leads actually come from existing clients, referrals or LinkedIn, more yeah. so than my website. But as... I'm glad as, you said but on that. As someone's pointed out, a website is actually an extension of your business card. It is. Yeah, because as Stefan says, it's... it's... Pe people don't always come to my website because they found me on Google and they want to come buy something. Mm. They come because they've met me in a networking event, they want to know a bit more. So they mm. click on their about us, they read up about you, they yeah. feel like they know you. Because remember, often with business, especially when you're selling a service, if you're selling a, a two pound doodah and people are going to come and check 12 people websites to find a two pound doodah, they've wasted they an just, hour over something that's going to cost two quid. They're going to buy it from you if they see it and it's convenient, they'll yeah. buy it and they'll move on. When you're selling... If you find bigger, a doodah for sale, let me know, by the way. Yeah, because doodahs <laughs> are a dime a dozen, aren't they? I know, right? <laughs> but when you need another service, you actually feel like you want to know the person and actually go onto their website, mm. learn a bit about them. Mm. And that's why we have websites to really... And also, the other thing is, most of my marketing 
points to my website hmm. to get them there. You should do. That's the funnel. That's the, the way it works. Yours. It's not, it doesn't belong to LinkedIn or Facebook. Exactly. So if it's you're personal. using Facebook, where do you point people to? Yeah. Well, it's a personal thing. You, you, your website you, need, is, you need to have a web. You need to your have website a website. very personal. Um, and like Stefan said, yeah, it, your website is an extended business card. Your business card is an invitation to find out more. Really, that's yeah. all. I, that's all I look at a business card as. Um, and and if someone wants to find out more, then you're sure they can go and look at all that stuff later on, and and, and it gives them things to look at. So, well, what sort of stuff does this company offer? Um, more than you know, because you'll often find that people offer. Companies can offer a lot more than what they've had the time to tell you about. Exactly. Uh, and you've got yourself a captive audience. Mm. Once they come to your website, they're looking at your stuff. Yeah, they're not looking at adverts on Facebook. They're not distracted in. by adverts on Facebook. I mean, they're not, when they come watch your video on YouTube and mm. they're, they're, ooh, a squirrel. What's and they're this not looking click, at this. Go watch yeah. cats doing something and they're gone. Exactly that. Whereas now. Which is they, what's going to happen to this video. Someone's watching an advert on it right now and they've gone off somewhere else. They've gone off looking at pictures <laughs> of squirrels dressed up as humans. Whereas <laughs> actually, when they're on your website, they're on your website. Squirrels I think, dressed I think, as humans. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Well, it's better than humans dressed as squirrels. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'd pay to see that, actually. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think it's vital that you have your own website. But again, mm. we come back to the very first question: How much are you going to pay? How much are you going to pay for it? And the mm. question there is: What do you want it to do? Yeah, it all comes down to the cost, the, the, the purpose, <laughs> as we were saying earlier. Um, and so long as you're cautious in how you find the right person to look after and, and create your website for you, you know, don't never ever take the first person who throws a price in your face. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact anyone who throws a price at you before they've even found out what the hell it is you want just give them a wide berth um, anyone who wants to talk to you and ask you questions is that that's an invite for them showing interest and, and actually wanting to understand what the hell is it you want so that they can help you achieve that uh, and the more questions they ask the more you should be um, excited about the fact that someone's actually wanting to do it properly mm. uh, because I know I've had, I've had people before where you ask them questions and they get so annoyed. It's like, how many more questions are you going to ask me? So, well, this is your business we're talking about. Why aren't you as excited about it as I am? Uh, well, you know, I mean, again, when I when I get asked to make spreadsheets, I get a few people who will contact me and kind of say, oh, I need a spreadsheet to do X, Y, and Z and give me a very broad overview. And then leave it up to me to decide how to do that <laughs> and i kind of think well that's fine because mm -hmm. i mean I, I am a professional i know what mm -hmm. to do but i want to do it to make it best for you and i need to know how yeah. you want to do it um i will offer suggestions that leaves a lot I'll, of scope to go in any direction it, it? It, it does and they all I, I get the feeling that a lot of people and it's possibly the same with websites someone said to them you need a website mm -hmm. they have no idea what they want it for they have no yeah. idea why they want why they need it or what they wanted to do but they've gone to a web developer and gone, I need a website, you, you do it. Yeah, I want a website, how much is it going to cost? And, and that is the dangerous way because you need to be thinking, I mean, we were talking at the beginning about logos and how embarrassed we were about our first logos and how embarrassed we were about our first about marketing and, and, and all the rest of it. Mm. The reason why I think I made a lot of so many mistakes when I started is because I didn't really think about it. I just did it. Yeah. Just go, go, Same go, here. go, go. And then after a while you think, oh, I should have thought that through. Take a minute, take a day, take a week, mm. however long it is, and just think about it. Do a planning thing. Think, what do I actually want this to achieve? Now, you may change your mind six months later. That's mm. fine. But at least have a think about it and actually yeah. go in with your eyes open. And, doing, and, and a website is one of those things that could become a central point to your business because that's where everyone's coming to. Mm. You can't really just leave that to someone else to decide. No. Um, and once you work out what your website's mm. purpose is, um, what would you say is the best way people could or should keep their website on track, if you like? So they're adjusting their website to fit its purpose. Because you talked about this earlier, you made some quite interesting points on this. Well, this is, this is where it comes to analyzing the data, understanding what their data is telling you. Because mm. now you can have a look and you can see, okay, hold on. People are coming to my website and they're, they're, they're doing that and I want them to be doing this. Yeah. And it's different. So how do you change it? If you're selling two different products or two different services and everyone's visiting one and everyone's ignoring the other one, do you still continue with that service? Mm. Or what is your marketing saying? Mm. Are people coming to you with the wrong, with the wrong ideas of what you're doing? Mm. We were talking about one-minute pictures earlier as well. You give the wrong one-minute picture, people come to your website looking for one thing and meanwhile they're going to find something else. Yeah, and they get confused. So, <laughs> so you need to be clear... <laughs> 
you need to understand. We're not having a dig at Robin at all. No, <laughs> no, Robin who? Robin. You, 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 Batman and Robin. So you you need to understand, and when you know what they why, why they're coming, what yeah. they what their their actions are, mm. you can then make those changes, and then you can look at the website. And I change my website often because I see the way clients are going, and I go, hold on, is that a thing? Are they looking for that? change it slightly, make it easier, take out things that aren't necessarily getting views that people aren't interested in, put in more of the other things that people are interested in, and also just, d just decide what, what do I want clients to be doing when they come to my website, and what are they doing, and how do I make the changes to accommodate what I want. So this is I why want. you took away all the busy stuff and just put four buttons there? Yeah. Uh, now, I know, I know it's when you first brought your website over to us, I looked at it and went, Wow, that's really busy. Yeah, it was really busy, and and I loved it because I'm one of the people who I'm one of those you guys who go every button on the screen. I know what they're all for, but then I realised people are coming there looking for something and getting lost. I looked at it and went, uh, "Where do I start?" Yeah, exactly, um, and that's why I've changed it. And now, I mean, I've I've deleted some of the pages, but the vast majority is still there. But you've now got to go looking for it. I think it's like the Gordon Ramsay effect, isn't it? Where you've got a menu that's got so much stuff on it, no one knows what to order. Mm. you've got to actually just say well actually let's just make four dishes and put pictures of them on there and see which ones people like uh, which is weird because if if james ever watches this that's exactly what i said about the restaurant we went to last night for pizza they had a big, big menu it was a3 size and it was just text mm. and this whole restaurant in beckenham there wasn't a single picture of food anywhere except for the little tiny dessert menu on the table i was like why aren't there any pictures of food anywhere uh, just a big menu full of full of um yeah. text and it was, you could sit there for 20 minutes going, I still don't know what to order because I don't know what any of this stuff is or what it looks like. Um, so you, you, you've really got to understand the purpose of what you want your website to achieve. Um, and like Richard says, if, if you're selling products and you're trying to work out which products are the best ones to stock, then it's a little bit easier, isn't it? Because you're still a business selling products like Amazon. Get rid of the ones that aren't selling, stock more of the stuff that is selling. But if you're providing a service which is based on your skill set, then... How would you would you adjust your skill set based on what is in demand, or would you say, well, well my website's not meet, it's not driving the right traffic to, for people that are looking for my skill set? Well, one one or the other, because if you if you've got a skill set and people are coming to your website looking for something different, mm. and you do have that skill set as well, I would think think, do you want to consider doing that? Mm. If the answer is no, that's fine, but mm. then you're getting the wrong traffic to your website. Yeah. So then what you need to do is look at your marketing. Mm. and go is the marketing sending out the right message yeah. if the answer is yes then when people are coming to your website why are they looking for that other stuff on your website if the marketing's working yeah. is your website misleading them somehow yeah and i think one of the most valuable things that people have taught me about websites and in developing them is read your website as if you're a client and you know nothing about your business that's really difficult to do if you're the it, website It owner. is very difficult to do. <laughs> and especially someone like me who's very technical and very detail orientated, it's very difficult to do. But when you actually do that and you look at it in the light of, if I were coming onto this website for the first time as someone who didn't know, what, what does this website actually say to me? Mm. As soon as I did that, I saw what you saw when you looked at my first website. I was like, oh my gosh, this is way too busy. I need to get rid of most of it. I think the only way to do that safely is to get someone... Um, who's not attached to your website to yeah. look at it. But, um, but a some, friend or family member. Someone that you trust who's a bit thick-skinned because you're probably going to tell them to get knotted when you make the changes. <laughs> yeah, you're going to start uh, throwing punches and chairs around at the end of it. But here's an interesting <coughs> question that Stephen said here. He said, well, um, I have a web page which gets, gets more, more hits, hits than my home page. Uh, Stephen, I think what you've got there is it, it could be a marketing thing where you're sending people to it, but if they're finding it on Google... All that means is that people have come to your website, they found what they're looking for on that particular page, mm. and Google fancies that page and has put yeah. it up the rankings. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing. One section thing. of his website is proving more favorable for that search term than yeah. his own pages. However, it's not necessarily a bad thing. What mm. I would advise on that and what I've done in the past, I have a web page, uh, a web page on my website which gets a, a few, a fair number of hits straight from Google, straight into mm. that page. So what I've done... The free download one was one because I had the Rugby World Cup spreadsheet so people were coming straight to the free download page, mm. not via the home page. They just wanted to give me that free stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so what did I do? Well, I just put a few other links on top of the free download page saying, by the way, did you do you know we yeah. also do this, this, and this? Use it as a chance to plug So yourself. use it as a landing page. <coughs> Actually change it a little bit and use it as a bit of a landing page. So yeah, give the people what they want, why they've come there, what their search term is that they found you for. 
they put a little bit more on it. And yeah, go, that web page rate. Yeah, that's is quite there, common, Stefan. More? That's that's very common actually for other parts of people's websites to rank higher than their homepage. That's quite normal because uh, I mean, with our website, you know, we, we do dedicated servers, cloud hosting, shared shared servers, and domain names. Not everyone's going to start on our homepage. Some people are just looking for domain names, so they mm. might end up landing. Google might send them straight to our domain names page where they can see the prices. Um, or someone might just literally be searching just for a dedicated server in London. And they might, they're going to land straight on the dedicated servers page and bypass all the other stuff on the home page. At, at, um, the, at, at the end of the day, I don't really care which page they come in as long as they're on the website. Yeah, as long as you and get their wallet out. Man. So already... to put on that page, if you find people are landing on that page, mm. turn it into a bit more of a landing page. Yeah. Put, a few, put a few other things on going, hey, you know, did you know we also do this? Yeah. Or even just the bottom of the page go you've seen this page take a look at our home page for all the other things we offer or yeah. whatever the case might be but try and keep them on your website yeah, accompanying relevant that. services yeah uh, you know you, if you're going to buy if you're going to rent a dedicated server have you got domain names to go with it to point at it and so on um so that's really um just you know talking about adjusting your website to match its purpose um and you've got to be willing and prepared it will be part and parcel of the ongoing process of having a website it's ongoing it's it's going to cost you money to outsource or it's going to cost you time one way or another yeah. but you've got to provided the time that you spend on it or the money that you spend on it is making positive changes yeah. that you know to be the right changes by what you've assessed and what you've established yeah that's a good thing if you're making changes for the sake of it you're well, wasting you your just, time you're just throwing darts in the dark you know exactly or, or playing lawn darts in the dark that's pretty dangerous <laughs> yeah that, that that is quite dangerous <laughs> I don't play that game. <laughs> I'll be dead by now. Um, so, you know, it, it's part and parcel of your marketing and owning a website is that not only is it your website going to be an ongoing investment, but making changes and working out if those changes are actually doing anything useful should be something you need to be prepared to do on an ongoing basis. It should never be a case of, and I'm sure you've heard of this a lot, where people just build it and forget it. Uh, and, and the website just sits dormant for years doing nothing. And you say, well, what, what what page is the most popular on your website? And people go, I don't know. And you say, well, what's the point? If you don't know anything about what your website's doing, why have you got one? Oh, like you said, because someone said we should have one. Um, yeah. It, 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 <coughs> I know a lot of people don't analyze it necessarily as far as I do, but mm. I mean, I've asked people, do you even know how many pages, page views you get a day? I mean, that's the most basic, simplest yeah. one. And they, 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 I mean, people ask me, what, what's page views? Yeah. But exactly. yet they've got a website because someone said they should have one. I mean, well, well, Stefan's got access to, on the C panel in the AW Stats, you've got access to your page views and which page views are, are performing and which ones aren't. Um, but before anyone goes, if we could leave, if we could finish up tonight's show with some top tips, if, what top tips, if any, could you give anyone if you say, okay, here's, here's the, the must-dos that... Um, if you could give some, impart some wisdom. I would say the must have is you must be tracking some kind of analytics on your website. Mm. Um, well, let's start from the beginning. You must have an idea of first and foremost of what you want your website to do. Yeah. Get the right people to make it. If know it's, it's, not, purpose, if it's right? not you, know its purpose. Make sure they know its purpose. Mm. And then monitor what is actually happening on your website. Have some kind of analytics, whether it's Google or something else. Mm. Analyze the data, um, whether you do it yourself, whether you come to someone like me to do it yeah. for you understand what the data is telling you and once you understand what the data is telling you you can then concentrate your efforts into improving and mm. making it do what what you need what you need it to do yeah. and i think if you do all of those uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a massively time consuming exercise just no. do those things on it a sounds frightening basis. but actually it can be done very quickly and, and it, especially when you get into a routine and you know what data you need to download each month you can set up exports that kind of thing yeah. and literally i mean if you've got the right spreadsheets and you've got the right data exported, it's as simple as a copy and paste and you've got your answer in front of you. Mm, so it, it can be fairly simple. Um, yeah, so like you say, know your website's purpose. Um, if you're not sure how to work out the statistics, then ask your hosting company. Um, don't be afraid to get in touch with your hosting company and say, hey, look, I know you guys give me some statistics. Can you sort of walk me through what they mean and what, what I should make of them? Where can I find the page views and how many people do I know are coming to my website? 
In fact, if you if you're paying a web developer on a regular basis, mm. so if you if you're not just paying them to make your website, but you're paying them on a monthly basis or whatever it might be to actually maintain and upkeep, mm. I would go to them and say, listen, I want to know that 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 and that every month on my web. Put the ball in their court, yeah, because they will be far more afraid of getting that information than what most yeah. website owners would. Get them to give you that information mm. and tell them I'd like that emailed to me on a monthly basis. Yeah, because they'll understand it more. As yeah, well. and then because a lot of people I've spoken to a few web developers who offer that, but yet their clients never take them up on it. Mm. Our picture's frozen again. Oh, this is going well. The audio's still going, but the picture's frozen. So if we do that, maybe it will come back into life. Can anyone see what we're doing? Uh, it's still going. The, the picture just seems spin the chairs around. I know, right? Um, it's probably because yeah. we've been still for too long. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much Richard's top tips, and I can't agree with I can't disagree with any of them. I was going to say I can't agree with any of them there. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to upset him too. Um, so I can't thank you enough for joining us again this week, folks. The picture seems to have frozen up, which always keeps it interesting. So we're all making horrible, funny faces at you right now. No one can see what we're doing. Uh, so that's that's cool. Um, if I go back to that one, does that work? No. No, that one's frozen up as well. Have we got a GoPro that's gone to sleep? Um, not to worry. Um, thank you for joining us all this evening, folks. I hope you got something useful out of tonight's show. And I sincerely look forward to seeing you all again next week uh, when we have Joanne Bell joining us from Bell's Accountants. So if there's anything you want to know about money, finance, uh, anything like that, uh, if you've got questions about money, then next week will be the time to get your questions in. Even ask, ask your questions on social media if you want. And uh, yeah, we'll see you at the same time next week. So thank you very much, Richard, for joining me this week. No problem, thank you. Much appreciated. Have a good evening, guys, and see you next week. Bye.